The scripture of tonight is Revelation chapter 2, verses 11 to 17. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. And to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, The one who has the sharp two-edged sword says this, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast my name, and did not deny my faith even in the day of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, because you have there some who hold the teaching of Balaam, who kept the teaching Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit acts of immorality. So you also have some who in the, name, who in the same way hold the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Therefore repent, or else I am coming to you quickly, and I will make war against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, to him I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and a new name written on the stone, which no one knows but he who receives it. Amen. It's the 13th lecture on Revelation. But dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and the members of more than 5,000 branch churches in the United States of America, United Kingdom, Canada, Peru, Honduras, Bolivia, El Salvador, Argentina, Germany, France, Russia, Belgium, Netherlands, China, Japan, Pakistan, Nepal, Indonesia, the Philippines, Taiwan, India, Mongolia, Egypt, Israel, Kenya, Uganda, Congo, Rwanda, Taiwan, Tanzania, Rwanda, Nigeria, Swaziland, South Africa, Botswana, Kotowar, and other countries, and print churches and local centers in Korea. And members were attending this service through satellite and the Internet and all the TV viewers. The word that the Lord gives to the seven churches can be applied to any church in any time. Those so-called Jews mentioned in the word that was given to the church in Smyrna have been around since the days of the Lord Jesus Christ. So has the synagogue of Satan. Those persecutions, tests, and tribulations the enemy devil sends God believing people who have been thrown into prison have also continued. And it will happen until the day when the Lord comes back to take us. Wherever the gospel is spread in the name of the Lord, especially where the power of God takes place, there are so-called Jews. They hinder the gospel from being spread, and they persecute the people who manifest the power. Even in today, they are the Christians, so-called Christians. They are Christians, but hinder the works of Father God. Even though they persecute people who are proclaiming that Father God is alive and Jesus Christ is the only Savior, they are so-called Jews. This is why I have explained the word that was given to the church in Smyrna in relation to the North Korea mission that this church has to accomplish. I'm not saying the word that was given to the church in Smyrna is specifically referring to the North Korea mission, the mission that is assigned to this church. It rather explains the situation that can happen in any place where the gospel is spread and the power of God is manifested. The important thing is that you have to realize the fact that there will be great hindrance by the enemy devil and Satan if the gospel is spread in the name of the Lord, especially along with the great works of God's power, and that you have to be awake and pray always to overcome it. The church in Smyrna is the model of all churches in such a situation. The church in Smyrna suffered various tribulations and persecutions since they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
there was hindrance of those so-called Jews, and there were tribulations and persecutions of the enemy devil and Satan. The Lord, however, gave a word of encouragement, saying, Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. They already suffered for the Lord's name, and they would suffer tribulations and persecutions by the devil. But the Lord didn't comfort them by saying, I know your deeds and sufferings. Endure with patience just a little longer. He rather told, told them to be faithful even more until death. He did it because he wanted, he wanted them to receive greater blessings and more rewards. The church in Smyrna would surely be rewarded for all the trials, tribulations, and persecutions that they suffered for the name of the Lord. But just enduring and overcoming tribulation, trials, and persecution alone cannot be praised in the sight of God. That's because you cannot be commanded only because you did what you should do. When you did more than you have to do, then you are worthy to receive commendation. It's natural that children of God suffer tribulation or persecution for the Lord's name. Therefore, in order to let the church in Smyrna to receive a great blessing and reward, the Lord didn't give the word of consolation, but urged them on with the words, Be faithful until death. Now here, I've already explained that being faithful until death does not mean only fleshly faithfulness. God's word to struggle against sin to the point of death and to cast off every form of evil and to have no self in you has the spiritual meanings of putting faith only the word of God that is the truth and abiding completely by the word. When you have these spiritual attributes together with fleshly faithfulness, then it becomes true spiritual faithfulness, and it will become the perfect reward. No matter how much fleshly faithfulness you acquire, it cannot become the perfect reward. The crown of life will be given to those who are spiritually faithful until death, and, you will, and they will be able to go to the third kingdom of heaven or higher. However, even though there is such a promise as this contained in the Word, it will be useless to them if they don't turn their ears to hear it. John chapter 10, verses 3 and 4 says, To him, to the Lord, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he puts forth all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. Likewise, only the sheep that belongs to the Lord will recognize the voice of the shepherd, the Lord, and follow him. And also in the same way, those people who received the Holy Spirit became children of God and have the Holy Spirit in their heart will listen and then follow the voice of the Holy Spirit in obedience. Tonight's verse 11 says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Here, an ear does not refer to a fleshly ear. It refers to a spiritual ear that the children of God who receive the Holy Spirit can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit with. You must have these spiritual ears. You must have the ears that can hear the truth and that can discern the truth. All of us must have ears that can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit who leads us to the truth and causes and allows us to know the heart and the will of God. Only then can we hear the Word of God. And when you hear the Word of God, we can also understand the spiritual meaning in it. By the way, this spiritual ear that can hear and understand the Word of God and that can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit will be as sharp as the amount of the evil you decrease in your heart. In other words, 
the less evil you have in your heart, the quicker and more acute the spiritual ears you can have. On the other hand, your ears will be as poor as you have evil. You can understand when you hear the word of God, and you cannot listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Instead, the voice of Satan can be heard. But, even though you cannot clearly listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, since you have evil still in your heart, as long as you continue to obey the word of God, proclaimed from this podium, only with yes and amen, you will soon reach the level that you can clearly listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Then, you will have the ability to discern everything according to the word of God. And you will overcome any trial, tribulation, persecution, or temptation. You can also defeat the darkness of the world and win over the evil of untruth. The Lord says that such a man who casts off the evil, who casts off the evil of the world and lives in the truth according to the word of God is he who overcomes. I believe, I believe that all of you are overcoming. And he adds that he who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. Then, what is the second death? Second death means that there is first death. The first death refers to a death when a man's fleshly life comes to an end. And the second death refers to a death when a spirit, which is a master of a man, falls down into the eternally unquenchable fires of hell. Revelation says in chapter 20, verses 12 through 15, And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books, according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So, if the name is blotted out, then those people will be thrown into the lake of fire. It says that books, not just the book, So there are many books, and there is another book. And this was the book of life. So all the believers should have name written in the book of life. And the other books, other than the book of life, people will be judged according to the deeds that are, they are written in the other books. So that's why I'm telling you not to commit a sin which will lead you to death. If you commit sin which will lead you to death, Father God will not give you the spirit of repenting or repentance. Your name will be blotted out from the book of life and your deeds will be recorded in the other books. since the uh, sin cannot be forgiven that kind of sin will be written in the other books and it will be judged according to the book people who live in untruth and evil and do not live in the word of Father God of the truth in other words he who doesn't overcome will be hurt by the second death which means being thrown into the lake of eternally unquenchable fire where even the worm will not be burned. On the other hand, people who listen to and live by the word of God so that they can stand in the light and overcome tribulation or persecution by prayers 
will not be hurt by the second death, but go in the way of eternal life. So, our Lord Jesus said, the way to salvation is narrow. It's not the wide road. This way to salvation is narrow. I earnestly hope that none of you who listen to this message will be hurt by the second death, and I hope that you will all reach heaven. I sincerely hope that I will not lose any of the souls that God has assigned to me, but lead all of them to heaven. When the Lord comes back to take us, and when He separates the wheat from the chaff, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you may become the wheat and enjoy the wedding banquet with the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, from now on, I will tell you about the church in Pergamum. The church in Pergamum is the church which heard the words of both praise and reproof. This church was praised for keeping the faith under many persecutions and hardships, but also blamed because there were some members who fell into Satan's temptation, compromised with the world, had worldly thoughts, and led to death. The verse 12 says, And to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, The one who has the sharp two-edged sword says this. Sharp two-edged sword says this. Here, the sharp two-edged sword means the word of God. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And the one who has the word of God, which is like the sharp two-edged sword, is our Lord Jesus Christ. As said in John chapter 1 verse 14, Jesus is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. He is one with God, who is the word itself. Therefore, the Lord surely has the complete word of God. Then, how does this word of God, which is sharper than any two-edged sword, work on us? The word of God is living, and there is life in it. There is no book which is living and has life in it. But only the word of God is living, and when we believe in and live by the word, it will work on us. and the work of reviving souls will take place. Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. Everybody has desires. If you want to receive the answer to your desires, all you have to do is delight yourself in the Lord. It's so easy. But I found so many people who cannot do even these easy things. Whenever they encounter any you know, trivial hardships, you know, they lose their thankfulness and joy. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. So we have to come to Spirit after living a good Christian life. And if we delight ourselves in the Lord, He will give us all the answers to our desires. If you truly believe in this word, please, according to this word, find what will please God and put it into action. You have so many desires in, in your heart. If you please our Father God, 
Then that's it. Why is it so difficult? Why have to live a you know, miserable life? We all have hope for New Jerusalem in this church. We all see the works of Father God. You should be able to have joy and thankfulness in your heart. Please, come to the level where you can delight yourself in the Lord. Then you will see the answers to your desires. God is pleased with faith, as said in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And He is also pleased with the blameless in their walks, as said in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 20. I gave you uh, many of my testimonies. I'm just wondering how many received the testimonies by faith. How many put it in their hearts and cultivate it? There, aren't, there weren't many people who could receive it by faith. Someone came to me to receive my prayer. He said, I was trying to, I was about to go to hospital, but I came to here. I came here to receive my prayer. In the early 90s, many servants of God and the church leaders saw me while I was dying. But I've never thought about going to hospital. When the Pastor m i g y u n g Lee, my second daughter, was hit by a car, before I started this church, um, when I came back home, after my prayer from the mountain, I found my first daughter, Pastor m i y u n g Lee, had the boils all over her body. She was supposed to go to school in a couple of days. She couldn't even move her body. Like a blood coming out from her body. But I've never thought about going her, taking her to hospital. Pastor Sujin Lee, my third daughter, when she fell down because of the cerebral apoplexy, I never thought about going to hospital. I only depended on Father God. And this pleased our Father God. So there was nothing that I, cannot, I couldn't do. Father God made everything possible. So I, can, I could believe by faith There is nothing impossible. So I never depend on, our, uh, depend on the worldly things. I depend on the Almighty Father God. Because He can do everything. So everything can be done by your faith. You heard these things many times through the many testimonies. But when you encounter such a thing, you don't show your faith. You try to depend on the world. When I was bleeding, I didn't depend on the world. Father God is the master of my body and all my things. And I prayed like that. And how could I go to the hospital? If I, went, if I had gone to the hospital, all I have said would have become lies. Father God, is almighty. I prayed like that. And I depend on the, I depend on the hospital when I encounter as, as bad things. Then all I, then all I said become you know, lies. So I cannot do that. This is the true faith. If you show the faith to our Father God, there is nothing impossible. There is nothing that you cannot do. But that's why Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, says, God is pleased with faith, as said. 
So Enoch was lifted up as a life. God is delighted with those who deal faithfully, as said in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. Father God is pleased with those who deal faithfully and with the prayer of the upright as said in Proverbs chapter 15 verse 8. So if you upright, if you are honest, if you do not deceive anything, let's say if you are frankly at this moment you're going to lose a couple of billion dollars. But you can be upright. Even though you are going to lose a couple of billion dollars, if you can show your uprightness, then our Father God will be pleased with you. When our Father God is pleased, then that's it. If you love our Father God, if you are loved by our Father God, if our Father God is pleased with you, then that's it. There is nothing that you cannot do. When you practice like this, God will be pleased with you, and then He will surely give you the desires of your heart. When you listen to this kind of message, look back. Why do not receive answers to my prayers even though I live like this? Please discern yourself. Have you ever showed your true faith to our Father God? Haven't you depend on the world? Was your deeds were blameless? Have you dealt faithfully? You experience that the Word of God is living in this way. Now, the Lord says that such a living word of God pierces as far as the division of the soul and spirit of both joints and marrow. Since Adam committed the sin, the spirits of man have remained as though dead sin inside the souls. But the spirits will come alive when the word of God breaks into the souls. He was a living being, but he became the flesh. So Adam became a man of soul, not man of spirit. So the spirit could not move at all. It was like a dead. You received the box with the seed in it. You received it, right? Did you? Did you see the bud coming out? Oh, yes. Those people who do not see the bud, <laughs> there are people like that, right? I received two of them. I, I put it in the kitchen. Last Friday, there was no bud coming out. So I was wondering. So I came to church and asked the people around. And nothing happens to that bud. And then some people told me, the temperature should be correct. It should be more than, it should be higher than 22 in Celsius. And you should water them properly. If you put too much water, then it will die. So you have to, uh, you have to do proper things in order for their seed to bud out. So you have to make the old environments the proper. Then the bird will come out. And you will see 
the seed which has Ma Min Zhuang Church imprinted. So uh, you have to know how to make that bud come out. So if you like water again and again, the seed in the dies. <laughs> The same happens, the same applies to our soul and spirit. When we accept our Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit comes into our church and make our spirit come to revive again. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit that brings revival to our dead spirit. The more diligently you break into the soul through the word of God, the more revived your spirit will become. So you have to break your soul. The spirit will be strengthened and your faith will grow up. It is that the word of God that breaks into the soul and causes the spirit to work even more actively. Then it penetrates joints and marrow. In a fleshly point of view, a joint is a part of a body where two bones meet. What happened to your joint and marrow? When it's penetrated, did it hurt? <laughs> so a joint is a part of a body where two bones meet. Then how can the word of God pierce a joint? Here, a joint spiritually means a frame of your own thinking. This frame is the, uh, this is the frame. This frame is built from all the things that you have seen, heard, and learned. In other words, it was built from countless untruth. So you have your own frame. When you learn knowledge, depending on where and whom you learn from, even if you learn the same thing, depending on the teachers that you learn from, it can be different. Depending on how those teachers were good and bad, your knowledge will be different and your frame will be different. And that frame make you think you are right according to the frame. Because you believe that what you learned is right. And when you come to this church, you realize that many things are different from what you learn and what you know. Or heaven, I mean, if the sun and the moon can stop in the middle, how can it happen? Because of your own knowledge and because of your own frame, it cannot work. It cannot work in accordance with what you learned so far. So there are many things if you come to this church, like uh, moving stars and coming, I mean, appearing and disappearing clouds. You all experienced it. The people on the other side of the globe can be healed by receiving the prayer transcending space and time, to receiving a picture on their pictures. Even, I mean, all the world, all the uh, people in the world witnessed it and then you know, proved it. Through the New Crusade, the word was spread to over more than 200 countries and they all received prayer, and they were healed. But if you have frame, 
Can you understand it? You will say no. Even though I show the things that is recorded in the Bible, because of your own self frame, you said no to it. So you have to break the frame that you have made. This is the frame that you made it from the world. But this is not it. The science, the knowledge of the spirit realm, you don't know yet. You don't know the eternal life. You don't know the spiritual world. There is eternal life. There is a spiritual realm. You know there is because you learned it from your experience. How true it is, the word in the Bible. If you just keep the whole Lord's Day holy and give the full tithe, you are protected from many accidents and disasters. Even though you, may, you encounter a car accident, your car is wrecked. But even if it happens, your body is protected. So this frame is built from all the things that you have seen, heard, and learned. However, you must be able to discern self-righteousness from self-frame. Self-righteousness is to insist that you are right. I mean, why husband and wife quarrel? Because they insist that they are right. Before they get married, they don't insist that they are right. Why? Because they love each other. They yield to each other. So they never insist that they are right. So they don't quarrel. So they are confused that they will be good enough after they marry. But after the marriage, usually husband, starts to insist on their own self-righteousness. And you start to, you know, husband and wife start to insist that they are right. So there is a conflicts and conflictions. So start to quarrel. The same thing happens in churches. As long as you have self-righteousness, you cannot make peace with others. If you cannot make peace with others, the Satan will start to work and the revival will not come to the church. So you should get rid of self-righteousness. Until a man completely changes by the truth, each will have his own self-righteousness. So before you change yourself by the truth, everybody has its own self-righteousness. However, even this self-righteousness is also formed by the untruths of the world. You have to realize this. You have to realize it quickly. In Exodus, what does our Lord say? When you make a deed, when you make a when you uh, make a deed of righteousness in the sight of Father God, then you will not encounter any plagues that Egypt, the Egyptians experienced. So the righteousness from the Father's point of view is completely different from your point of view. When, as long as you are in the flesh, you cannot make peace with the Spirit because of your self-frame and righteousness. You have to realize this. If you don't, even if you are a cell leader, subject leader, district leader, you cannot change yourself. You still remain the same unless you break your self-righteousness and frame. You have to break. You have to figure out what is your self-righteousness and frame by fervent prayer and fasting. 
You just receive grace during the, I mean, during the service, but that's it. Since a person is taught the untruths as if they were the truths, he comes to have his own self-righteousness that he thinks he is right according to his standard of measure. But when he starts to listen to the truth of the Word of God, he comes to know what the real truth is, and then he can start to cast off self-righteousness, which is against the truth of God. But sometimes, finding what needs to be changed is very hard, so to get rid of it from the self-righteousness is equally difficult. That's because people build their self-frame after their self-righteousness had been self, set firmly in, in place. I'll read it again. That's because people build their self-frame after their self-righteousness had been set firmly in place. In other words, the self-frame is a secured form of self-righteousness that he thinks he is right in his standard. Everybody has their own different righteousness. To some, uh, their personality becomes such a frame, and to some others, their accured knowledge becomes a frame. I think I have told you this story. When I was on my way to New York in an airplane, the president of Women's United Mission, she said, oh, I can see the, the Statue of Liberty. So I was surprised. Why the Statue of Liberty is here? The Statue of the Liberty should be in San Francisco. And this is the untruth that I learned when I was in elementary school. I learned that liberty, I mean, Statue of Liberty was in San Francisco. So it was 1950s. You know, when we go to, you know, the States, we go to, you know, in the, the west of the States, right? We always saw the pictures of the Statue of Liberty all the time. We were, I was wondering, like, uh, why the... Uh, <laughs> You know, Statue of Liberty is in uh, New York. I, I knew nothing. <laughs> so because of the frame of, the, of my knowledge, I said no to her. But she, uh, she told me and explained that the Statue of Liberty is in New York. So, like, I realized that and I, I could learn the geography of the New York, and I was so shocked after I learned that Statue of Liberty is in New York. So I realized one thing. Whatever I think, something is for surely right. It can be wrong because it is formed from the wrong knowledge. So even though I think something is right, I have to step back and then look around and check it and then make a conversation. Then I will not make a conversation. I mean, I will not make a mistake. I will not make quarrel with somebody. I realize this fact. I thought it was surely I was right. But in the end, it turned out to be wrong. So it can happen to me again. So I thought, I realized that I should not make quarrel. When someone says, he is right, I have to step back and think about it, study it, check it, and then make a conversation with him again. 
지식 자체가 하나의 틀이 되어 버리기도 합니다. 그런 것들이 얼마나 많아요. There are many things like that. So many people have their own frame formed from their own knowledge. And they insist that they are right. Then all ten people are different. Sometimes culture becomes a frame. Taste becomes a frame. Or deeds themselves become a frame. There are you know, some cultures that are right, but the, wherever you go, every country has their own different set of culture. So you should not insist that your own culture is right. Let's say, for example, shaking hands. Some says, like, you know, shaking hands like this very much. But other people, you know, shake hands strongly. But some people just touch your hands, barely touches it when you shake your hands. So depending on the culture, I mean, depending on the country, they have all different kind of the shaking hands and, you know, to get, you know, agree differently. They always, you know, hug when the 40 members come to me. They hug me in a very different way, right? Then they shake hands. They hug me and then shake hands. They hug me. <laughs> and then they shake hands and then they shake hands with me. So everybody has different culture, different etiquette, different taste. So you should not insist that your own frame is right. When I went to uh, Middle East Asia, Dubai, I told you the, the, uh, how we eat. Well, I thought that they were going to eat you know, differently. But, I mean, it was... I mean, well, I, I expected that it will be different, but, you know, they were really different in the way eating food, even though they were a royal family learned in uh, many uh, Western countries. When I went to African country, one of the chief of a tribe uh, invited me to the invited me to the, uh, their, their meal time. I think it was Maasai tribe. And, you know, usually the Maasai tribe, you know, uh, ask the guests to drink blood. So I asked them in advance so that I will not drink blood. They, anyway, they burnt, you know, enough meat. And we have to eat by hand because there is no chopsticks. Do I have to ask them to give me chopsticks? That's a great mistake. I have to eat the way they do. I have to use my finger. Should I say, ah, I don't, I, I cannot eat it without chopsticks? No. You have to follow their rule, just as Romans do when you go to Rome. Sometimes culture becomes a frame, taste becomes a frame, or deeds themselves become a frame. For example, someone may have a frame that he thinks such is a man of the spirit. By the way, until this frame is built, 
many things that he thinks has been right, in other words, self-righteousness piled up. You know, if you cannot come to the whole spirit, after you come to the spirit, the reason is just this, because you have self-righteousness in it. I'll read it again. Until this frame is built, many things that he thinks as being right, in other words, self-righteousness, piled up. Based on this self-righteousness, he came to build his own self-frame about a man of the Spirit. He may force his self-righteousness onto others, so that others will sense feelings from uneasiness and difficulty to oppression. He may judge or condemn people that think or act in opposition, his own self-frame. But the people do not realize this fact. They just believe that they are right. So they force their own self-righteousness onto others, so that you know, others feel in you know, a sense of you know, uneasiness. And they even judge or condemn others because they are not in accordance with their own self-righteousness and frame. That's why those people, even though they come to the Spirit, cannot make peace with others. Sometimes there are people who don't seem to force his self-righteousness so that they appear to have no conflict with others even though their self-frames are firmly secured. But this type of people block others' words or give admonishment with their self-frames. And so, they cannot find their true self and it is hard for them to change themselves. Since they have their own strong self-frame, but they do not give you know, the word of admonishment to others. So they seem, they, you know, it seems that they don't have much in you know, a conflict with others. But they don't receive the others re in the reproof or admonishment so that they cannot change. You should be able to take all the admonishment or encouraging word, any kind of rebuke so that you have to find your true self. But without accepting that kind of you know, rebuke, you cannot find it. Only when you receive rebuke or reproof from the one who is superior to you, then you can find it and you can break yourself. So you sh it, it's not easy to find someone who is superior in spirit. These people have to spend you know, many years in waste. That's why you need to come to the seminar or conference and education. And when you receive grace, you can find true yourself. Therefore, you must, by all means, break your cell frame. And this is possible only with the Word of God. Sometimes there are people whose cell frames are so strong that it allows no room for the Word of God. But God never forcefully opens the door of their heart and never forces the Word into their heart. That's because it's against God's justice. If God opens the heart and forces the word into their heart, don't you think the enemy devil and Satan will bring the accusations that it is against justice? That it's not fair? Then everybody will be saved. I told you already.
let's say he, you know, write down that I am God and Jesus Christ is the Savior. If he, you know, writes that kind of sentence on the sky by fire, what's going to happen? People will fear when people see them. Our Father God can do, do it. But it's not just this. And He cannot take the human cultivation into the right direction. Only when someone voluntarily opens his heart and accepts the Word of God can the Word of God come into his heart. That's the way of justice. Can Father God give me His power to me right away? But it's not again. It's not again. It's not justice. It's against justice. So I have to go through all those steps, and I have to please our Father God through prayers. When I achieve victory throughout the uh, trials, I could receive. I could reach the higher and higher level of power. Our Father God leads people according to the justice. The same, have, the, the, the same applies to the spiritual training. Our Father God will not just give me the spiritual knowledge right away. There are steps that I have to go through. Therefore, as long as you acknowledge that you have self-frame and they become ready to accept the word of God with humility, no matter how hard the personal self-frame is, it will be broken by the word of God. Now, it says that the word of God penetrates marrow. Marrow is the soft substance inside bones. Spiritually, it means evil that is minute and deep-rooted. You know the marrow. The, you know, the marrow is a soft substance inside bones. It cannot be seen with your bare, bare eyes. If you try to eat in you know, a chicken bone, try to uh, chew it, then you will taste the marrow of the chicken bone. You will, I mean, if you tasted it, then you know it's tasty. There are people that who chew you know, chicken bones. So marrow is the soft substance, soft substance inside bones. Spiritually, it means evil that is minute and deep-rooted. Just like marrow that is deep inside bones, the root of evil also goes deep into the heart of people. In other words, marrow refers to evil that is hidden deep inside the heart. Evil in nature or life force all belongs to this spiritual marrow. Why did our Father God refine Job? Job was the person who feared God, gave charitable work to the widow and the orphans. But why did our Father God accept the accusations from the Satan? That's because the Job had this marrow, the, the evil and sin in nature and life force. Our Father God allowed that in the trials so that Job could find his hidden marrow, the evil in his nature. So when he, under, when he underwent his trials, his hidden evil could be revealed. And he was even complaining that Father God you know, gave bless, gives blessing to uh, evil people. I really hope that you know, many people can receive grace from the book Job. Many people, many Christians misunderstand Job. They just believe that even if, they, even if people undergo trials, they have to just endure with patience. 
They have to understand Job correctly. They should realize that they go, they undergo trials because they have the evil inside their heart, in nature. Then they can be healed. But they just endure with patience. Did Job didn't pay, did, did, you know, Job didn't endure with patience. He complained, but since he met God, he repented it. He rendered his heart, and he was healed. In the end, he made the repentance. He rendered his heart in repentance. Then he realized that he had evil in his deep inside his heart. After repenting it, he could receive all the blessings. And even in his old age, he could get more daughters, more beautiful than anybody. Only the, word, only the sword of the Word of God can penetrate such a deep hidden evil. But that does not mean that the Word of God can unconditionally penetrate the joints and marrow. The Word must be spiritual enough to examine even the joints and marrow. And the person who delivers the Word must have the authority of the Word. The Lord, who has such power in the Word of God, like that of a sharp two-edged sword, speaks to the church in Pergamum. In the verse 13, he says, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. Satan's throne. Not synagogue of Satan. He said, Satan's throne. I've told you about the synagogue of Satan when I explained about the church in Smyrna. Now, this Satan's throne is different from the synagogue of Satan. In your church, in branch churches, when two or more people gather together and talk about the untruths, complaining about things, then they are the synagogues of Satan. More than two, you will become a synagogue of Satan. I've told you many times from this podium, you have to listen to the goodness, you have to speak the goodness, you have to talk about the goodness. You have to listen to the goodness. You should not speak, which is not goodness. I've, to, I've told you many times, you should not listen to the word with, that is not goodness. When you heard it, you have to make the people repent. Then such people will disappear around you. So, Satan's throne refers to the place where Satan sits. This indicates that the church in Pergamum was located in a place which was full of idols. Pergamum was one of the major cities in Asia Minor in those days. It was the center of politics and studies. It was a city of extravagance and idol worshipping. Under the rule of Rome, they even worshipped the emperor. Pergamon was full of shrines and temples to worship idols, such as temples of Zeus, Dionysus, Athens, and Asclepius, and three huge shrines for worshipping the Roman emperor. There was a special temple, the temple of Asclepius, that was a place to worship serpents. When we go to the pilgrimage to the sacred place, 
And I go, we go to well, many different places. Then we found many you know, temples and shrines which worship you know, serpents. Just like Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 says, And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. A serpent refers to Satan. Pergamon was a city where Satan's throne was. And the church in Pergamon was living in their believing lives in such an environment. That's why the Lord says, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. How severely did the members of the church in Pergamon suffer persecution? Think about the people of today. When we compare the consciousness of these people in those days, I don't know about exactly what it is about. Because, but let's think about, about 50 years ago. Compare the consciousness of the people in the 1950s and the people in the year 2007. Even though we opened the door wide open, there were no thieves. There are many houses that they, they didn't even have in a gate or door. When they harvest their you know, wheat or rice, they don't bring those things into their house. They just leave it in the field. But nobody takes them away. And there were many beggars, but they didn't you know, steal the things. It's totally different from today. People were so pure and good. Motorcycle or bike, they don't take it away. Even though, you know, car is locked nowadays, people break the window and get it. So people were so pure and good, even though they were poor, when they uh, met a birthday, they shared the uh, you know food with other you know other neighbors. Even though they were poor, even though they were poor, there were no people who committed suicide. But nowadays. In the, uh, I, I heard the news that among the men who are in the 40s, the first leading cause of death is cancer, and second is suicide. So the uh, 6 out of 10 die of cancer in their 40s. And the second leading cause of death is suicide. Even though they were so poor in the 1950s, there were no, you know, it was very rare to find a man who dies of suicide. I mean, you know, suicide. But in today, the world is standing in sin. You are trying hard to live by the truth. You pray, fast. You can, you know, enjoy your life. But you came here, you come here, stay all night. Even though you have to go to work on Saturday morning, you stay up until in the second half of the service. That's why you are specially chosen, loving people of God. Even though the world is stained in sin, you try hard to live by the truth. How great your reward will be. Now compare the people who lived in 100 years ago. 
막 믿음이 1단계, 2단계나 반석에 서지 않은 3단계나 나보다는 더 선했다 이 말이야. 진리를 몰라. They were pure and good even though they didn't know the truth. 옛날에 불이 나봐요, 시골에. Let's say a fire set out. When some you know, people say that there's fire, then people will come and try to you know, quench the fire. They tried so hard. And it takes so long for a you know, fire truck comes. So all the neighbors in, in, in that town you know, come. And then try to, you know, seize the fire. I mean, to try to uh, quench the fire. Even though it's very cold winter, it doesn't matter. It didn't matter. People just came. You know, seeing the deaconess, Jung Sun Lee, when she was in my house, there was, uh, I mean, the, uh, the small restroom was set on fire. In the morning, I thought it was all, you know, I mean, there was no fire left. So I took out the, all the ashes and then put it outside. But in those days, we, we, we used to have a you know, separate restroom, right? And then inside the ash, there were a little, you know, the fire crack inside. And there were a little you know, the air coming in and then it burnt out the, uh, the uh, restroom. I think I was sleeping in uh, my sister's house. My uh, the, uh, brother-in-law was not there. So I cried out, fire, fire. And there were not many neighbors. They, they, they came to me. They came to the house. All the neighbors in the town came to that house and tried to put out the fire by, you know, pouring the water into it. They were so courageous. Even though it was a very cold winter day, they cooperated and then they put out the fire. It, it burned out the whole the restroom. But nowadays, when people say fire, not even the neighbor right beside doesn't come out. But the people in hundred days ago, I mean hundred years ago, they were so pure. Even though they lived a very poor life, they tried to share. Even though a beggar came, they tried to put they tried to give at least something little. I even remember my mother gave, you know, the food and meal to the beggar. Even though people were so poor, they did it like that. But nowadays, people were so evil, and they tried to deceive, you know, the whomever they met. But you are here. Try to live by the truth. And our Father God measures your faith. Even though you are not good, you are not good, you are not as good as the people in the hundred years ago. Even though 
you are good because you are living in the world which is stained in the sin. So our Father God measures the each individual's faith differently. And the Lord's faithful witness, Antipas, was martyred here. In the verse 13, the Lord says, You hold fast my name and did not deny my faith even in the days of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. You hold fast my name and didn't deny my faith even in the days of Antipas. But let's look back ourselves. Then who was Antipas and how was he muttered? We will look into this in the next lecture. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in Psalm chapter 19, verse 7 to 9, the psalmist says, The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The testimonies of the Lord is sure, right? We show you for sure, but there are still many people who do not believe but doubt. Even though the people are so silly, when they accept it, they become wise. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true, they are righteous altogether. The law of the Lord, the testimony of the Lord, the precepts of the Lord, the commandment of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, the judgment of the Lord, all this is the word of God. It all belongs to the word. In the following verse 10, and the psalmist says, They are more desirable than gold, yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Gold, much fine gold, honey, and honeycomb. The word of God is not difficult to take. The psalmist makes his confession that it is more desirable than much fine gold and sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. If you desire the word of God this much and take it, it will not be difficult to become sanctified. It will not even take a long time. Since the word of God is like a sharp two-edged sword, when it pierces the spirit and soul, joints and marrow, it may cause you pain. Unless you don't change, it will cause you pain. Sometimes there are people who left the church because of this pain. But if you think about the pain that your spirit and soul suffer because of your sin, and if you think of the pain and suffering, if your joints and marrow become rotten, you will realize that being pierced by the word of God is rather joyful. If you think that your spirit and soul will be prosperous after your joints and marrow and spirit and soul being pierced by the word of Father God, then you should be able to say thank you to Father God. You will, just, you will accept everything only yes and amen. And if you do this, there is a possibility that you will change. You will come to spirit and the whole spirit. Therefore, if you desire the word of God like gold and take it as sweet as the honeycomb, 
you will surely try to get even more. When you listen to the word of God like this and make bread out of it, then you will be changed into a man of spirit. I hope that all of you can make the confession, how sweet are your words to my taste. Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth, as found in Revelation, I'm sorry, as found in Psalm chapter 119, verse 103. You should be able to confess like this. You should be like this. Who can do this, but why not someone? People come to me and say something if I make the, you know, converse, I mean, if I make the preaching short. Senior Pastor, why do you deliver the word in that short? Please give us more word. Give us more word. Even if I preach more than an hour, people just come to me and say, Give me more, give me more. They are the people who take the word of Father God as sweet, sweeter than the honeycomb. If you are such a man who desires and longs to listen to the word, since it is said that the word is God, you will love God even from the depths of the heart. If you love the word, you are the one who loves, the, who loves our Father God. If you take the word of Father God as sweeter than the honeycomb, then you are surely the one who loves our Father God. If you keep doing it, then you will all come to spirit. May you become like this so that the living word of God will yield abundant fruit in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let's think over the message and pray together. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you for your grace and love. Let your message become life and faith in our heart. Father, thank you. As you said to the churches, let us look back on ourselves, reflecting on the word that you gave to the churches. And let us repent and turn back so that we can delight ourselves in you, Father. Father, thank you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I will pray for the sick. Please lay your hands on the sick part of your body or infirmities of your body and listen to this prayer and receive this prayer for you, the desires of your heart. Father God, please lay your hands on them. Give them power, power, power. Transcending space and time, please work on them. Bless all the brothers and sisters from the branch churches all over the world and the people who are attending this service through internet and satellite. Father, tonight many people send me the pictures. Please lay your hands on these pictures. Father, Father, please answer their prayers and desires of their hearts. Father, Father, the Fugil, pastor, requested prayer. Father, he is in financial difficulties. Father, please work on him so that make everything work for good so that he can get away from the financial difficult. He has to leave the place, even if, I mean, unless he pays back the money. Father, please work on him. Father, from Peru, Eliasar Aron requests the prayer. He is sick. Please give him strength and give him healthy body. All the enemy devil go away. All the enemy devil go away. May the light come. Father, please work on this son. Let the enemy devil and Satan go away from him. Abraham Eliseo requested prayer for the uh, uh, uterinary cancer. Received the cleanse 
cleanliness and all the cancer go away. May the light come. Father Che Su Young requests the prayer to receive good eyesight. Father, please bless him to receive better eyesight. Son Chun Le requests the prayer for his business and to have happy marriage. And Son Ching Huan requests the prayer for his diabetes. Hu Zhang Hung Zhang Wei requests the prayer to pay back and requests the prayer to receive financial blessing. Bong Li Zhe requests the prayer for his liver and kidney and a herniated disc. All the diseases go away by the fire of the Holy Spirit. May the light come. Father, please work on them. Scorch every disease by the fire of the Holy Spirit. All the brothers and sisters, please lay your hands on them. And from head to toe, every intestines and organs, scorch and burn every disease by the fire of the Holy Spirit. May the light come. Receive clean. May the light come. Father, please give them spirit, give them blessing in their spirit and body. Give them better eyesight. Give them better hearing ability. Bless them. Father, let them speak. Father, all the intestines, joints and marrow, disease, all burn all the disease by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let them be here of all the skin diseases and other various diseases. All the diseases go away. Receive the cleanliness by the fire of the Holy Spirit. All the diseases, all the itinerary cancer go away. May the light come. Father, please make them gush out all the diseases. May the light come. Father, all the diseases. Father, please cure them and heal them. Give him the fullness of the Spirit and surround them with light and be with them in the second half of this service. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.